Hi, so today I received a question that I've been meaning to address for a while. I've had a list of videos that I wanted to do that I haven't had the time to do, and this is a really good opportunity to answer one of the questions that was on my list. So this question says, uh, you fix computers, I fix meals. I have lost everything in my life except my wife and my pets. I am looking up and watching your videos, trying to bust my ass using your advice. This is why I call you my spirit animal. The problem I cannot seem to get over is that I keep getting told that I am overqualified. Can you explain in a video what kind of business turns away perfectly qualified individuals? Why would someone choose zero experience over someone with a crap ton of experience? And I figure it's worth uh, giving you some of my, uh, just, just some of my gut reactions uh, and just some of the gut feelings that I have that a lot of employers may not be willing to talk about. And the reason I think a lot of employers are not willing to talk about this stuff is because they're afraid that if they talk about it that people are going to think that they're bad people or that they're doing something wrong or that they're purposely screwing with people. And I say this from an honest place. I'm not saying that I always act on these thoughts, I'm just going to talk about the impulse thoughts that, that came into my head. Because remember, I was not a, I was not, I'm not a, really a businessman in the sense that I went to business school or I became a manager at a company, then worked in human resources, then became a boss. I started a business because I had no job, I had no money, I noticed I could do something for money, so I decided that, like, that's how I got into being a business owner. It was, it was this accidental thing that I just kind of fell into. So I, I think I can give my first impressions on what some of my thoughts were when it came to the hiring process from a different perspective than a human resources person or a boss or a CEO. For me, well, I've had experience in the past where I thought, wow, this is great. So I have these people that seem very experienced, they're overqualified, and this is great. I, this is a great opportunity for me because I can't afford to pay somebody 30 or $35 an hour to do this job, but they're willing to, for some reason to work for somewhere in the $15 an hour range. And I thought that was amazing. And then I started to write, it wasn't in, until later on that I realized some of the mistakes that I had made in the hiring process. Very often when I hired somebody that was overqualified, what I noticed is that they had this and I, this could be me being paranoid here, but they'd come to work with this aura around them, this general kind of unpleasantness, like, man, I'm 40 or 50 or 60 years old, what am I doing working for this 20-something-year-old jackass? Uh, what went wrong in my life that led me here? I should be running things. I know better than this person what should be being done. I am going to do things in my own way instead of listen to the way that he told me to do something. And what I noticed very often with the overqualified individuals that I hired, I'm not talking about all of them, just some of them. What I noticed with the overqualified individuals is that if I said, hey, can you do me a favor and just try this this way? Because when you do it that way, it gets done a little bit faster, but there's this uh, negative effect that occurs, and they would often kind of go, meh, yeah, I'll try it like that. And they wouldn't say it with that exact voice, but they would say it with that voice where it's kind of like, I know better than you. Why, would you just, just, I'll just let me yes you to death so that, you, uh, let me yes you to death so that you leave me alone. And this was with just stuff as basic as packaging a box, um, you know, just so that I would have less FedEx claims to file and less returns because stuff were broken a long time ago. I thought it was great that I had these overqualified people, and in reality, it wound up being a liability because they were so qualified, they thought they knew better, and as a result of thinking they knew better, they then developed this attitude and that negative attitude wound up uh, negatively affecting uh, the business. Uh, the next thing that I find happens with, with, and again, not all overqualified people, but some overqualified people, is if you're qualified to make $35 or $40 an hour, but I can only pay you $20 an hour, you're overqualified, now you're applying for the job and you know the salary, and, I th and I'll think to myself in the beginning, okay, that's great, this person is clearly qualified to make much more money, yet they're willing to take on my job with a much lower salary. And, um, and I, you know, in the beginning I thought, wow, this is amazing, but what would happen as time went on is you would notice that they, that I would notice that they valued the rules a little less because they were overqualified. And again, I'm not saying that this goes for everybody. I'm not saying that this goes for everybody who's overqualified for a job. I'm just talking about some of my personal experiences that, that have um, biased the way that I look at a resume at this point in time. 
And so I've had people that thought that, you know, okay, I'm taking this job because I need, I, I need a fucking job. I need a way to pay my rent. I need a way to buy food. And, and, and they take it, but they don't realize in the long term that they're eventually going to start to resent the fact that they are worth 35 or 40 an hour but are only getting 15 to 20 an hour. And that starts to manifest itself in these negative, passive aggressive ways in my experience where they don't enjoy the job and there's this general uh, feeling of discontent, I'm better than this, that then winds up demoralizing the other people you work with. This is an issue that I had, um, well, it was like, I think, four or five years ago, probably somewhere around five years ago, I don't remember the exact date, but there was one person who was very, very excited to come on and work, and he was very happy to come on for a specific salary. But then he kind of started acting like, well, I'm here at that salary, but I'm doing you a favor by being here at that salary. And no, and I, as a business owner, I appreciate my employees, I appreciate my staff. There is a lot that I would do for them uh, out of appreciation for the fact that they've supported me for this long and put up with my shit. Uh, but at the, but at the end of the day, no business owner wants to feel like, like uh, their staff feels like they're doing them a favor by being there. Do I appreciate them? Absolutely. Would I do uh, many favors for them? Would I try to help them out in many, different, in many ways if they asked or they needed it because they do an amazing job? Of course I would. My, my staff, I treat like family, and that's something that I'm criticized for a lot by other people. You should see your employees as employees, not as family, but I treat my staff like a little family. We, you know, we, we, we care about what's going on in each other's lives. We're not, we, we treat the place like, it's, um, like we all own it, even though I'm the one that owns it. And, and that, that's something that you kind of have to earn out of people. It's not something that you're just going to get by putting in a, a job ad on Craigslist, but that's a topic for another video. But no business owner wants to feel like their staff feels like they're doing the business owner a favor by showing up to work. And, and, that, and that is a mindset that, that I find that usually manifests itself with people who are overqualified. And I understand feeling that way, and I understand why they would feel that way. If somebody is worth $40 an hour and they are receiving 18, I understand how they could eventually get to the point where they think that they are doing somebody a favor by even being there because they, they're worth more than what they're getting paid. And that is, is something that I am now concerned at about as a business owner. In the beginning, I was naive. As a beginning business owner, I was very naive. I didn't understand what was going on for the most part because I, did, I just thought, you know, how is over qualification even a thing. This must be some form of discrimination. This must be some form of crap. As a naive new business owner, like most new business owners, I thought I knew everything. I'm smarter than everybody else. I'm going to figure this out. I'm successful because I'm a visionary. And as time goes on, as I've said in these videos, you find out that you're not successful because you're a visionary. You're successful because of, you know, again, totally different things. Like I mentioned in a couple of videos ago, I found out that I'm successful because I'm motivated to keep trying even after failure because of the way I grew up and the way my dad taught me, you know, you live life. You, you don't just give up and then, oh, well, you give up. You know, you, you, you try, you give up, you try, you give up, you try, you, you try again and again and again and again. And by the 5,000th or 6,000th or 10,000th try, you get it right. But I thought that, that, that uh, this whole idea behind overqualification was BS. And as time went on, as I learned, as I had more experiences, I started to realize that it is, it is a thing. Now I get why people are concerned about it because you have to think about what is this person going to be thinking a couple of months into their job? Is this person going to feel like they're doing me a favor by being at my business? Is this person going to start uh, taking on this poisonous mindset where they pity themselves, where they don't, where, where they uh, feel that they're undervalued, or where they feel that they know best and they're going to avoid listening to my company policies all because they're overqualified. So that's what goes on in my mind. Now, when I hire people, I try to avoid hiring people via resume. So when I put up job ads nowadays, I don't even ask for a resume, and very often my hiring does not occur from job ads. It occurs from meeting people within the industry. I feel that the most organic and natural way to meet new employees is to just, just talk to people who are in your business. Dale Dalton has a book on this called The Gifted Boss, and the, mo the, the best thing that I think anybody could take away from that book, the best thing I think somebody could take away from that book is the idea that you don't meet great people through putting up job ads on monster.com. 
Chacham. You're going to meet people who are, who are good or people who should be employed by you by, by going out there in the business and talking to people that work at other companies and talking to people at trade shows and, and, just, and, and just talking to them about stuff that has nothing to do with, oh, hey, are you looking for a new job yet? Some, you, you're you're going to get to learn about what's going on. You're going to develop a rapport with those people. You're going to get to know them. You're going to know their strengths and weaknesses. And someday when a job opens at your company, then you're going to naturally hire that person if that person is then free or that person is looking for new work. That's how I hire people. I don't hire based off of this resume BS. For, just because, to be honest with you, I expect most people to lie on the resume. I expect most people to use their friends or their uncle as a reference in the resume. I don't feel like putting in the work to figure out if you actually got those grades in college. I don't feel like calling up the human resources department at every company that you claim you worked at just to see if you actually worked at that company. It's a lot of work that I don't feel like doing. So I just don't bother with the resume thing altogether. And I've seen no correlation between how amazing the resume is and how amazing the work is. If anything, I've seen a direct correlation between how amazing the resume is and how garbage the work is, and also how uh, you know, garbage the resume is and how good the work is. And the, the, my assistant that I just hired recently, I never asked him for a resume. His resume reads like uh, like, you know, uh, it reads like that of a 19-year-old kid that doesn't have a lot of job experience, but I would absolutely take him over a lot of people that had a more interesting resume because, again, I I'm used to the resume. I'm used to the resume lying, and then I'm used to also the, all, those negative, all those negative things that often go along with, uh, with, what was I just talking about? I'm used to all the negative things that often go along with, uh, with the overqualification. And you know, that question is always in my head. It's, so if you are qualified, if you have a master's degree in this, and you have 20 years experience in that, and you are this good at all these things, then may maybe it's insecurity as a business owner. I don't know, maybe it's my own personal insecurity that makes me think this. But my first thought is, why are you here? So if you have 20 years of experience doing all these amazing things and you have this list of accomplishments and you have this master's degree and you have all these amazing references and you graduated magna cum laude and you've, you've accomplished all of this, why are you at my door for a job that pays $15 an hour? So I mean, either my instinct uh, looking to protect my business and hire the right person is either Maybe you're lying maybe about one of these things. Maybe you're kind of fabricating it. Because again, if you are this qualified, you should be a designer or an engineer that's making $600,000 a year at some really cool company. Or maybe there's something you're, you're not telling me here. Maybe you are this qualified, but you went to prison for manslaughter. Maybe you have a drinking problem. Maybe you have relationship issues that you take to work and that makes you a really toxic employee because you're going you're gonna to make the rest of the staff feel uncomfortable with, uh, with everything that you were... Crap, I forgot what I was talking about again. Okay, what was it? Ah, yeah, the toxic work environment. Maybe, you're a to maybe you have that kind of toxic uh, energy about you because you have a bad relationship and you bring that to work. I don't know what it is, but these are the things that run through my head as a business owner who is, has more experience versus what used to run through my head in my early 20s when I had far less business experience. And these are all thoughts that just come through my head just based on good and bad experiences I've had with employees. Uh, now, how can you get around that? Because again, you're not a business owner here looking to hire people. You are somebody who yourself is overqualified. To be honest with you, if you are overqualified for these positions, I would just be honest with the interviewer. So try to figure out what their concerns are. There's this great book by Jim Camp, and I know I keep quoting other people, but most of the knowledge that I'm giving you is knowledge that I learned from other people. Uh, this is a great book by Jim Camp, and it's called Start With No. And what he talks about is how most people, when they're trying to sell you on something, when most people are trying to tell you why you should buy something or why you should agree to a deal, what they do is they try to sell to the audience, or they try to sell to somebody without knowing what those person's concerns are. So this is, this is one of the reasons that I think traditional salesmanship is such bullshit and why I laugh every time somebody at my gym walks up to me. Uh, actually, somebody from my gym recognized me from Reddit and it was actually one of the few people at my gym that never tried to sell me personal training. I'm sorry that I forget your name, but whoever you are, thank you for not bothering me at the gym, that's awesome. But at my gym, most people will walk up to me and try to sell me personal training and they always do it using this bullshit, fucked up crap shit that Crunch teaches, this 10-step sales process, which is walk up to somebody, 
Ask them, what, how, you know, how are you working out today, sir? How's it going? Oh, what are you working on? Then regardless of how perfect your form is, regardless of how well you're doing the exercise, they're gonna point out some bullshit that you're doing wrong, make you feel a little insecure about it. Then they're gonna tell you how you could do that exercise so much better. You could, here's what you could do. Here's this little tip that's gonna help you with your gains and you're gonna get so much bigger if you do the exercise the way they tell you to and it's gonna be awesome. And then they say so. You know, if you work with me, you'll get bigger. You work with me, and uh, you know, if you work with me a few times a week, you know, your your workout routine will get will will, will uh, you you know you'll uh, you, you'll do so much better. And the thing that that's a, that that they fail at with that bullshit ten step sales process is not one time during the course of that do they actually work to figure out what my goals are. What if I don't go to the gym to get big? What if I go to the gym? so that I can get off of my chest everything that irritated me that day. What if I'm not doing bent over rows because I want to get larger lats, I'm doing bent over rows while I'm thinking about uh, the, uh, about, um, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the Kilpatrick and Townsend crap that I'm going through. What if I'm going to the gym because I just lost $30,000 that day and I'm irritated and I want to take it out on that so that I can then go to sleep. Nobody thinks about that. Nobody thinks about what the other person's concerns are. And if you're trying to sell something, I think you should always try to sell something from uh, the perspective of the person you're trying to sell something to. And Jim Camp talks about this in his book, and he's 100 times more successful than me, so I highly suggest that you listen to him. He says that you should always try to figure out what someone's concern is. Don't start spilling the beans. Don't start talking. Don't have diarrhea of the mouth when you're trying to sell somebody. Listen. Ask probing questions. Ask these questions that are going to allow you to figure out what that person's pain is. What is that person's concern? Then once you understand the pain of the other party, what's causing them pain, what their concerns are, then you can start selling to them. So what I would do is try to figure out what happened to the last person that worked here? What, why are you hiring me? What is go, or try to figure like, out, just be honest in the interview, because an interview goes two ways. It's not just them asking you questions, it's you asking them questions. So be honest and say, what are your concerns in regards to me with this job, Ross, interview? Now, that, that's not the right way to say it. You would say, what are your concerns that you have when you read my resume? You could start out with something like that. Just come up with some open-ended question. And then they'll, then they'll um, talk about their concerns and they may, they may actually bring it up to you. Well, to be honest with you, we've hired a few people for this position that thought that they were too good for the position or, and they, they wound up quitting with no notice because they thought that. And then you could say, okay, well, I have a lot of experience in other fields, but I don't have a lot of experience in this field. So even though I may seem overqualified because of my education and my experience, I understand that in this field that I am not worth this high a salary because I don't have that experience level yet. I realize that I'm still kind of on the bottom of the totem pole. So I understand how when you look at my resume, you may see me as overqualified, but if you look at this part and that part, you'll see that I don't have a lot of experience in the specific job that I'm, that I'm looking to obtain from your company. So I, w I don't believe that I would, I don't believe that over time that I'm going to, uh, I forget what I was talking about again. What was I just talking about? Any reminder, Blackberry? Uh, I don't believe that over time that I am going to, to take on that toxic mindset because I genuinely don't believe that I am better or too good for the job. I mean, you could do a better job of explaining it than I'm doing. I'm just coming up with this, this crap at midnight. But the principle is still something that I think applies. Try to figure out what is concerning the person who's hiring you, and then try to sell to them based on that. Don't just have a resume with a bunch of bullet points about why you're awesome, because all those bullet points on why you're awesome, you're telling somebody, uh, you know, I have a lot of experience, when their primary concern may be, this guy has too much experience to do a good job. So make your resume very, very brief and to the point, and don't start spilling the beans, don't start trying to sell to the other person without knowing what their concern is. So that being said, hopefully this gives you some insight. Again, I am not, I am by no means a human resources person, I'm by no means a large company owner, but I have had to deal with the, the whole issue of people being overqualified in the past. I thought it wasn't an issue. I then figured out over time how it can be an issue and how, and, and I, I incorporate these thoughts into my hiring process. I'm not closed off to the idea of hiring people that are overqualified. It's just that I kind of have a bit more of a focused, uh, 
focused eye for what it is I want to look for when I'm hiring people now based on that experience. Hopefully this helps you out and answers your question in some way. Stop recording.